Hello and welcome to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to deal with your technology needs and treat you like a person in the process. You should give us a call for your free hour of tech support, 790-2040. That's 520-790-2040. We'll help you out with whatever issues you may be having. Hey, Tara. Hi. Hi. So Tara's here. I am Ken's here. here. <laughs> Rob's not. No. No, next week, I yeah, think. Yeah, next week. I think. Because yeah. he was on last week. Oh, man, there's... There's some interesting stuff in the news today. Yeah. I, I like it. I can dig it. We'll start with Google. Okay. All right. So uh, Google, as you uh, know, has been doing this whole Google Fiber thing for a while. They've been uh, rolling it out in a bunch of cities. Mm -hmm. But there's a change of tactic coming up. Previously, in all the other cities that they've, that they've been in, they run their own fiber to everywhere and, and compete. Mm -hmm. But in Huntsville, Al Alabama, they have... Uh, they have announced that they're going to be using something called dark fiber, which is fiber that was uh, laid down by the local power utility, but is unlit. They're basically just uh, dark. Yeah. Well, not used. Unused. So it means they go anywhere. You know, they they run everywhere, and anyone can can punch into them if you get the leasing rights. So Google's decided that they want the leasing rights to to that, and an anti-competitive also, mm -hmm. meaning that. Uh, if somebody else wants to come in and provide fiber, then they'll allow that also. That's cool. So they don't have an exclusive lease on them. And, uh, and it may sound like a nothing story, mm -hmm. right? Like, all right, so Google's going to lease some, some dark fiber that's out there without that competition uh, clause built in. That's a huge thing, right? Because, first of all, this model could work just about anywhere. Right. Because most... Most cities have already have fiber run all over the place. Just it's unused. And beyond that, because they're not taking a competitive stance, they're saying, well, come on and compete with us. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, let's, let's do stuff. Let's do stuff together. And I, so I, nice. Yeah, and I think that that really sort of shows that Google is committed to tearing down the monopolies that the local companies have over Internet access. Mm -hmm. And... So that means that uh, Google's going to start competing in Huntsville, and I'm sure that the local uh, cable carrier, because there's only one, I'm sure, yeah, is maybe is, two, is terrified, um, and they should be, right? because there's just no way that you can compete with that unless you intend to, right? Right? It's it's not a you can't accidentally compete with Google Fiber. That is a you have to come up with a game plan and you have to do it now. Just keep in mind that Google Fiber <clears throat> charges like one fifth of what your local cable company does for high speed internet for mm -hmm. about 15 times the speed. So you get real internet access, gigabit synchronous connection, meaning it's gigabit in both directions. And uh, you're gonna pay like $100 a month. I am very envious of the Huntsville, Alabama people right now. Yeah, aren't we all? Yeah. Um, but the the chief complaint that the cable companies have had so far is that they just can't compete. They can't support that type of uh, you know bandwidth. Well, Google Fiber, which is building everything out, mm -hmm. giving away free internet access to anyone who decides that they don't want to pay for it, as long as they pay for the installation fee, uh, has been turning a profit every year. So it certainly seems to me that. It's a disingenuous claim that Comcast and Cox or whoever, Time Warner, can't compete on this scale. I, I, it, just, it just seems impossible for me to believe that. Because it's not like the cable companies are doing anything uh, that's like build out, right? Mm -hmm. They're not running fiber right now, or at least not in large uh, you know, quantities. Uh, everything else is existing infrastructure. Right. And they don't even deliver on the speeds that they say that they can. So I, I doubt that their problem is, is an inability to support the infrastructure. I think that the the real issue is that there's a certain amount of greed involved. Yeah. So, uh, well, the, you know, in in the tech industry, this is sort of like a, a holy war as far a as bit, yeah. as far as internet is concerned. And I really think that it's this is the way that. It should be going. And I like the fact that Google left it open and said, well, we're not going to to make it so that we're the only high-speed 
fiber carrier in town. Mm -hmm. We're going to make it so that anybody who also wants to compete can bring it. Let's do it. And I think that's, that's a great idea because it's the monopolies that the cable companies have is just ridiculous. It is. It it makes me crazy. So I'm talking to you, Cox and Comcast, especially here. Listen up guys. Yeah. Well, yeah. And our problem here is, is not Cox or Comcast more, you know, city leadership. No. Yeah. County and city leadership that are basically saying, eh, yeah, whatever. We're not going to change anything. We're not going to let Google in here. God. Dorks. <sighs> well, technically, technically they're going to try to bring some kind of high-speed thing to Tucson, but only in new housing developments. Yeah, so Cox's announcement saying mm-hmm. that they're going to do gigabit internet right. in new developments. Now... <clears throat> I don't know, you know, I mean, for those of you who may or may not know, Google only operates within the city limits. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry, Cox only operates within the city limits. And I'm not sure how much new development is happening within the city limits. I have no idea. Because the city I don't is, live anywhere near the city yeah, limits, so. The city limits are kind of, I don't know, occupied, right? There's, most everybody lives there already. Apartments. Yeah, um, maybe. I've seen a few going up here and there. Spanish Trail. Before Houghton? Yeah. So that's still in the city. Oh, over there by Target. There's some apartments going up. Yeah, so that that maybe. But, yeah. But, I mean, it's, that's sort of like saying, you know, I don't know. It, 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 no. It, it, yeah. There's just not enough there. Right? Now, if, if Comcast were saying that because they're on the outskirts and there's room for growth, mm-hmm. then, yeah, that makes sense. But I don't know. And, and you know they're going to overcharge for that. Right? Oh, they're, yeah. They're, gonna, you're, they're not going to be charging $100 a month or whatever like, like Google is. They're going to be like, yes, for $10 million, <laughs> you can have gigabit internet. Pinky to the mouth while they do it. Yeah, and it's going to be gigabit you know, down and like half a meg up or something. So it's still useless and you can't do anything with it. It's, it'll be like DSL all over again. Mm, fun. <sighs> I don't miss DSL at all. Now, for as much as I talk about CenturyLink, because if you're a regular listener of the show, you know I have a certain disdain. Just a tad, yeah. Well, it, it might even verge on hatred of, of the CenturyLink. You might say that. It, uh, at times, it's, I'm a little uh, fiery when it, when it comes to talking about CenturyLink just because they purport to offer internet, sort of looks good on paper it's a step above dial up yeah um however i have to give them some props and i'm just going to go ahead and throw this out there because i want to in the interest of fairness Mm -hmm. i should i want to compliment them when they do something right and um so there's a an area in, in in town that is very underserved right there's no real high speed internet there and uh we talked to both, uh, you know, Cox and Comcast, who are both nearby, and said, "Hey, would you like to run, you know, some internet out to this business? You know, they'll do a nice long contract for you." How, how do you feel about it? And they both basically said, "No, we're not going to do that." Hmm. So, as a last ditch effort, there was a conversation with CenturyLink, and they're like, "Yeah, we'll run fiber over there. We're nearby." Nice. And uh, so now we're talking to them about that. So. They are saying that they're going to offer some pretty decent speeds. You know what? I always liked their customer service. Mm-hmm. I never had a problem with their customer service. I just had a problem with the speeds. Yeah. Well, and the fact that they call themselves an internet provider. Well, you know. But the customer service was good. Yeah. They're, well, you got to be nice when that's all you've got. You don't have to be nice. <laughs> I've talked to them before, other companies, and they Man, don't. I complimented yeah. them, insulted them all in the same. I know. Yeah. What's it's, wrong it's, with you? It's the silver lining. Yeah. Well... So, CenturyLink, thank you very much for, for doing something right in this particular case. Now, do something right by all the rest of your customers and give them real internet access. Yeah, that'd be nice. That would be awesome. That Instead would. of that stuff that you did. Anyway. <laughs> <sighs> you know what we need to do? We need to talk about our sponsor. We need to talk about Perfection Auto Works. They are nice enough to sponsor this show, and you should be nice enough to give them a call and thank them for it. 
And the way that you can do that is you can take your car down there and get your 26-point inspection for free. Because summer's coming up here, except for next week. I know. It right. got hot, and it's going to get cold again. All right. So next week, next week, maybe you don't need to go down there. Thanks, but the, El Nino. But the week after, right, it's going to be really hot. So you oh, need yeah. to go down there and get it. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, listen to the ad that's coming up next. Mike and the guys down there at Perfection Auto Works are awesome, and we appreciate them very much. You should, too. We'll be right back. Whether you're dealing with hardware installation or, heaven forbid, a virus, Mike Swanson is answering all your questions one by one. So call in or chat in with yours. The website, gurushow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is the Computer Guru Show on AM 1030 KVOY The Voice. Mike Swanson, your computer guru, is just a click away. Listen and watch at gurushow.com. This is the Computer Guru Show. Welcome, Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to deal with your technology needs and treat you like a person in the process. 790-2040 if you want to be part of the show. Ask us whatever questions you have about your technology, and we'll see if we can help you out. So last week we talked about uh, a hospital in Hollywood that had been a victim of the crypto locker infection or a crypto locker infection and ended up paying the ransom to get their data back. Well, it turns out that that's also happening at a few, few hospitals in Germany and that, uh, you know, I guess maybe they don't have the same type of controls that we're, um, that we're supposed to have here. Probably not. Yeah. Maybe something different, but Somebody I, needs I to call know. a politician for me because I'm not going to do it <laughs> and, and tell them about my two-year plan for data. <laughs> that, that's that's what I'm saying. And not to mention, somebody can call that hospital in Germany and let them know we can help them out with their backup process. Yeah, there you go. Because if you have backups, you've got nothing to worry about. And, and we do repeat this quite often. You must have backups. They're important. Really, really important that you have a backup of your data. Yeah, I kind of need to do that. <laughs> so, I mean, how much money do you want to spend with ransoming your, your data back? Really? Yeah. Because you could have just bought an $80 hard drive and made some backups. I mean. Makes not, it easier. Not that hard. Okay, fine. Anyway, um, so, the, yeah, these hospitals are also facing the same type of fate where they're going to have to ransom to get their, their data yep. back because they don't have effective backups. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's big business now, apparently. Yeah. So, hey, you know, give us $15,000, we'll give you your data back. $20,000. I mean, how much is, how much are your, is your, the health of your patients worth to you? Right? That's a lot of money. So, yeah. And, and how does that affect the, you know, rates of insurance and how much it costs to go to the doctor and mm -hmm. all of that? I mean, over there, probably not a whole lot. But I don't know how their health care system works at all. Yeah, it's pretty much free. So, yeah, it, it's it's just to me is. Have you ever you, you ever hear where you? I, I don't do this, so I don't really know. But I hear that there are people that will watch like sports on TV and then they <laughs> scream at the TV because yeah. somebody did something so remarkably dumb they just can't believe it. Yep. I scream at the internet. You know, it's just like those IT guys are obviously morons, mm -hmm. right? It's where's your backup, fool? <laughs> you know, how about how about not giving everyone access to encrypt everything? And so, I, so I'm sort of an armchair IT guy in this particular case. <laughs> there you go. But it's just like, come on, hire proficient IT people. That's that's the moral of the story here because there's a lot of people because they don't understand what the IT guy actually does, right? Yeah. They're just like, this guy says he fixes computers. I guess he's hired. Really? Yeah. No, you got to have some sort of, I don't know, background, understanding. Because I, I will tell you right now that a majority of what we do at Computer Guru is clean up what the amateurs leave behind as far as we go into a business and we'll be like, wait a minute, you guys are actually functioning like mm -hmm. this? And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's just the way it's always worked. You know, 
<laughs> well, it's not working. <laughs> and uh, it, it's just, listen, if it, you, you probably feel like you spend a lot of money. If you're a business owner, you probably spend a lot of money on technology and, and keeping your infra- infrastructure running. And the problem is, is that you probably don't understand what is happening with that. Don't understand what's going on. And you're, you could be playing somebody, paying somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. Let's put it this way. If your IT guy is always busy, right? He's an idiot. And that's just pretty much the way it works. If he's not sitting down playing video games because everything is running smoothly, then uh, you've got the wrong one. And that's pretty pretty much the way it works. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, let's take some phone calls here. That's what I think we're going to do. Let's talk to Shane. Hello, Shane. How are you? Hey, good morning. Um, okay, so uh, just to give you what's going on, I have Windows 10 on a Lenovo laptop, and randomly, as much as I can tell, because I've tried to pay attention, when I boot up the computer, it will start moving very slowly. Everything will load slowly, and I pulled up Task Manager and watched it, and what it'll say is the disk use is at 100%. However, nothing else is nothing else. It, it's not showing a read-write rate. It's not showing network usage. It's not showing any programs running. It literally just says the disk use is like 100%, and it'll take like a few minutes, finish up, and then the computer runs normal. And it only happens sporadically. Um, and the second part of that question was I had a friend tell me that he looked up and it was um, to go into the advanced settings under the MS config and change the uh, CPU usage to um, like the max CPUs on the computer, which it was set at one and change it to like eight, and then put uh, go to the, the, the window next to it where it says memory and adjust that because he had read like on a on a Reddit forum that that addressed this. And so I just wanted to check this with you and see what, what you thought about it. Okay. So this is only at startup? It's only at startup. It doesn't continue. It's sporadically. And then, like I said, I'll sit there and watch it. I'll watch the task manager. It might take three minutes, three to five minutes. And then, every, and then the disk use drops, and that's it. Everything runs normal. Okay. So... When you're on the performance tab there, there's a little button that says resource monitor. Mm -hmm. And if you click on that, while this is all happening, it'll tell you what's actually holding up the the disk drive. I did try that um, after reading the forums, and I got the the biggest things that was using it was um, the Avast service. And the, um, I'm trying to think of the name, it it says... um, Service host. Services.exe. Something like that. It's probably and SVC I, 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 host. Thank you. That's it. Yes. All right. So SVC host is that's sort of all Windows backgroundy type things. Mm-hmm. Um, and if Avast is holding down a, a good portion of it, it's, it could be it's doing some type of a you know startup scan. But for it to be at a hundred percent is a little weird. Um, I think I need a little more detail on this. Send me some screenshots of that stuff. Can you? Yeah, absolutely. I'll email it to you. All right. That would be great. It, S- send it to radio it, at azcomputerguru.com. And do you have any knowledge about this? Because apparently my friend said it's like going around the Internet, uh, probably from the Reddit forum where it started, about um, on Windows 10 to go in and change those two settings, the CPU usage and the memory usage on the advanced under MS config. Yeah, I tell people not to go messing around with stuff in there. Don't mess. Okay, so leave it the way it is. Yeah. It, out of the box, it should be running the way it's supposed to. Now, okay. if you're making changes in there, you may be applying some type of a Band-Aid, but not necessarily dealing with the issue. Ah. So I would say leave it the way it is, the way it's supposed to be, and then let's find the problem and solve it. Okay. So send me some screenshots, okay. and we'll see what we can do. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. You have a great uh, Saturday. All right. Thank you. I love Reddit. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> everybody's got that friend on the Internet. You know what I mean? It's a love-hate relationship with Reddit. Well, it, it is. And the, the thing I don't like about specifically the IT forums in mm-hmm. Reddit is that um, I, I I can't actually go in there, mm. right? Because I will go in there and I'll be like, oh, I'll help some people solve some problems because I'm bored. And, you know, and I'll start, you know, typing up answers. But there's always in every thread, there's that jerk right that just wants he just wants to throw out information that sounds good but was really dangerous wants to see the world burn right he's actually hurting people 
right? He's like, oh, yeah, we can solve this problem. You type this and do this and do this. And Stop if somebody's, somebody's going to listen to him and type those commands in and break something in a huge way or get somebody fired. Mm-hmm. And so I'm constantly arguing with the trolls whenever I'm in there. So I had to stop, right? Because I just, I don't have enough energy for this. Right. Yeah, it's, it's like. There's too many of them. What am I supposed to do about this? All right. So uh, let's see. Do I want to do the story first? I don't know. Do you? No, let's go ahead and take the call. Let's go ahead and talk to Charles. Hey, Charles, how are you? Hi, Mike. <clears throat> how goes it? It goes well, sir. How are you? Good. Uh, better for talking to you. I'd like to know two things. Number one, what is the fact that, and if you don't want to go into this or you've already covered it, just be brief with me, please. But w- number one, what does it say about the FBI that they can't crack the uh, encryption on the uh, on the, the iPhone from the San Bernardino shooter, number one? And number two is, if uh, Apple is forced to uh, to create some kind of a program to crack their own encryption, won't that set off sort of a, a technology um, arms race for people designing the next TGP or Tor or you know ten thousand bit encryption or something like it? And I can take my answer on the radio. Okay, so the, the 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 answer is well to the first part. Is the FBI has no problem cracking that encryption, right? And the FBI can do it. Mm-hmm. I could do it, right? So the FBI has no issue. Either that, or they've got busy IT people. <laughs> right? <laughs> the FBI doesn't have any issue with this. This is this is about setting a public precedent. This has nothing to do with whether with ability. So this is about the FBI saying, well, we want access without having to work at it. And it has nothing to do with the, their ability to do it. Even John McAfee says that he'd do it for free. Just send him the phone. Yep. All right? Or he'll teach them over Skype even. So it, there, it's, it's certainly not an issue of ability. The ability is out there. It can be done. Um, no big deal, right? Uh, and, and it, yes, you're correct that there is a... To say it's a slippery slope is is a massive understatement, All right? So as, as soon as as Apple caves, which it doesn't look like they're going to, and by the way, a, a New York district judge said that they don't have to. Says that Apple's not obligated to unlock the phone for them in any way or to help them in any way to do so. Um, it it's just as soon as that happens. Right, the FBI is going to say, "Well, okay, this is done. So let's make a billion more requests." And local law enforcement, oppressive governments, anyone who wants this technology, once that technology is out in the wild, which is what Apple's main concern is, it isn't. The, the they themselves said it's not that we can't do it; it's that we're not going to. Mm-hmm. Right, we're not going to violate uh, the the trust of our of our customers, and uh, not to mention that once this makes it out into the wild, because it's not like the government has any type of track record of keeping any secret safe. Right. Yeah, you know, as far as technology is concerned. Um, they know that that's going to escape into the wild. And once it is, then that means any hacker group, any oppressive regime, anyone who wants to be able to control the content or access the content on any Apple device would then have the ability to do so. And Apple says they're not going to do that. And I don't blame them. I think that that's a prudent course of action for a business that is concerned about the privacy and the safety of their clients. And worldwide, not just here in America. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah that's the other part of it is they're like, well, it's not going to get out into the world. Well, once it does, it's not limited to here where the laws are, are friendly-ish towards you know the snooping governments. It's, it's going to make it out into the world where everyone can do this. And so... Uh, right now, you, the largest percentage of hackers are, you know, uh, China and Eastern Europe. Uh, you know, those, those, those are where all the good hackers are at. Mm-hmm. So as soon as it gets there, then you're you're not safe anywhere in the world with your device because it's not like the you know your packets on the way from from China to here have to show their visa, right? It's that's there's no there's none of that. It's we are in a global age where any of this, especially when it comes to the Internet, this whole idea that, that the laws are specific to countries or regions, it's ridiculous. It, it just doesn't exist in that way. 
So you got to start thinking more as a global player when it comes to that type of stuff. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, more of your phone calls and more Computer Guru Show. Your computer guru, Mike Swanson, is here to help you tame that beast of a machine. Join the chat right now at gurushow.com or call in. This is the Computer Guru Show on KVOY, The Voice. Mike Swanson, your computer guru, is just a click away. Listen and watch at gurushow.com. This is the Computer Guru Show on KVOY, The Voice. So there's this thing going on with the FBI and Apple that we know about. And in an odd sort of twist, Amazon decided to remove device encryption from their tablets, which is kind of weird. I mean, they, they said that the, just nobody's using it, so we just removed it. Such a, what? Such a dumb excuse. <laughs> that, that, uh, that's a smelly answer. That's all I got to say. It's it just, no, no. I mean, that's not what happened. Now, there was a, an enormous backlash online uh, against Amazon being like, what do you mean you're taking away our ability to encrypt our devices? Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, you're not using it. No, no. (laughs) If people weren't using it, that doesn't, doesn't mean you should make it so they can't use it. That's just not how this works. That's it. That would be like, you know, in the, in the seventies, right? Car manufacturers decided after having seatbelts in cars, they're like, nobody's using them. Yeah. Take them out. No, that's not how this works. You should be encouraging or forcing people to use full disk encryption. That's 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 the right answer here. So anyway, on the next update, which is cap- coming out in the fall for your Fire tablet devices, encryption will be back. But that's in the fall, so. Yeah, until then. Keep an eye. Yeah, until then, you know, try not to, to make yourself the focus of an FBI investigation or anything. There you go. I mean, everything will be should cool. should be simple. <laughs> right. That's okay. They won't be able to crack it anyway. You just <laughs> tell them it's encrypted. And it may not be. And then they'll, they'll have to, you know, have a, an argument with Amazon. There you go. So in the chat room, Rob was talking about uh, <laughs> the, the count, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Eastern European count wanting to send them one million ruples. Uh, yeah. Um, You've had the Nigerian, you've seen the Nigerian email scam, right? Just about every day, yeah. Right. So and, and it, it's kind of silly. Mm-hmm. So People fall for it, though. Have you heard this one? It's a Nigerian email request. It's, you know, because the, the way the Nigerian scams work is that they want you to basically, you know, give them access to your bank account or create a bank account for mm-hmm. them or send them money so that they can send you a portion. Right. Of a larger portion, right? Generally, it's in the millions of dollars. Right. Um, but this one struck me as, as funnier than okay. the other ones. It says, hello, I am Dr. Barke Tunde, a cousin of a Nigerian astronaut. Okay. No, let's go ahead and start with the Nigerian <laughs> space program. Is it existent? <laughs> he was the first African in space when he made a secret flight to the Soyuz 6 space station in 1979. He was... <laughs> You just can't make this stuff up, man. <laughs> he was on a later Soviet space flight, so he used T-16Z to the secret Soviet military space program, 18, 1989, blah, blah, blah. He was stranded there in 1990 when the Soviet Union was dissolved, and his other Soviet crew members returned on returned to Earth, but his place was taken up, or taken up by return cargo. There have been occasional you know, uh, re- resupply flights to him to keep him going since then. He's in good humor, but wants to come home. Wow. I can't even get to the... All right. So let's get to the part where they're asking you for money. Uh, because, you know, they, they have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, in the 14 years since he's been on the space station, he's accumulated flight pay and interest amounting to almost 15 million American dollars. This is held in a trust at the Lagos National Savings and Trust Association. If we can obtain access to this money, we can place a down payment with the Russian space authorities for a Soyuz mission to bring him back to Earth. I am told this will cost three million American dollars. In order to access this trust, we need your assistance. Of course they do. Yes. Consequently, my colleagues and I are willing to transfer the total amount to your account or subsequent 
for subsequent disimbursement. And since we are a civil servants and are prohibited by the Code of Conduct Civil Bureau from opening and or uh, operating foreign accounts in our names, we need your help. The trust that we are placing on you at this juncture is enormous, and in return, we have agreed to offer you 20% of the transferred sum, while 10% shall be set aside for incidental expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was wrong. There is a Nigerian space program. Really? Yeah. They launched a satellite 10 years ago. Is that the first launch they've ever had? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, they, they do have one. I, I didn't know that. So... In 2006 mm -hmm. was their first launch to anything to space that we know of. Mm -hmm. Yet this guy's been up there since 1979. Yeah. And they've been planning a another launch in 2020. And he's been up there. I oh. guess they've they've done a lot with the Russians. Because the longest s space mission ever just ended that we know of. It was just about a year. The guy just came back to Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelly. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking, have you... There's a show out there, uh, it's, it's on the Sci-Fi Channel, mm -hmm. and it's all about sort of the future with space travel, and, right. and there's these people that that have never been to Earth. Yeah, they, they, they've grown up in space, and they're called belters, you know, and they're like the miners of the, of the universe or the solar system. And it's a very interesting show, um, but... It, it, they showed the, the the consequence of one of these people coming to Earth, and basically the dude was just crushed by the gravity of Earth, right? Because he'd never been there before, had no bone density, just could not handle. So this poor Nigerian space guy that is stuck out there, who you should not support if you ever get this email, by the way. Um, it, the only way he's going to survive is to stay in space. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. And also, he doesn't exist. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and talk to Robert. Hello, Robert. How are you? Hey, Mike. Are you um, three quick yes or no answers? Okay. Are, are you in favor of collection of all this aggregate mega data? No. Are you, are, are you okay with a warrant that law enforcement gets to read a particular guy's emails? Uh, if they get a warrant to read email, uh, sure. If they get a warrant to listen to the phone calls, is that cool? Uh, I think if they go through the proper channels, get a warrant, yes. I'm not talking okay. FISA court wi wa uh, warrant either. I'm talking they went to a judge. If they get a warrant to uh, have these companies unencrypt the phone and they discover that a place that you and your family are about to be is about to be blown to bits, are you in favor of that? I'm not in favor of them having the ability to unencrypt a phone via warrant or not. Why would you want this form of your liberty, which will blow your family to bits, be taken from you so that all they would discover about you personally say is if they kicked in your door is that your oven is dirty. I don't understand the question. Ask me again. Okay, it's a two-part question. Okay. Why wouldn't you want a known terrorist to have his phone examined? And what's wrong with the collection of data? And I assume that you're a law-abiding citizen. Yeah. Um, then there's no harm to you. They don't want to come to your house. There's nothing for right. them well, there. They, they uh, can't get a promotion by kicking in your door. Okay, so it's a you, the frame of reference here is the is my problem with the encryption debate. All right, the the two parts of this. Let's go ahead and start with the if there's nothing to hide, then you have nothing to fear. Then that part bothers me, right? Regardless of whether or not ha I have anything to hide, I have a I have a civil liberty, the Fourth Amendment that says that, that you shouldn't be able to search anything that that, that I'm that I say you can't. Now, um, beyond that, I mean, there, there's a certain amount of if I put something in the safe, yeah, you can break into it. And, yes, with encryption, it can be broken into. It's not like this is an impossibility. Um, and I think that they should have to work for it, right? Now, the whole for the children or because of terrorist argument to me 
is uh, highly disingenuous, right? As far as the, you know, we're trying to keep you safe and we're trying to, to, to make sure that, that the area that you're going to be going to have your picnic at isn't attacked by terrorists. Um, I, I just disagree with that as it, on its face. I disagree with that type of an argument, right? Because you could then use that exact same argument for anything you wanted, right? We want to, we want to search your car or your house to make sure that terrorists haven't been there while you were at work yesterday, right? Well, that, yeah, that would require a warrant and a whole lot of evidence for that to occur. Right. And, uh, and I, th- I, I think the same thing happens here with the, the phone debate also. Now, they don't have an issue, right, where they, they've already got permission to access the phone. That's, that's not the, the heart of the issue here. The, and, and as we discussed earlier in the show, they have the ability, right? But what they're looking for is they're looking for a back door to be built in to devices so that in the future – that they don't have to ask these types of questions. They don't have to put forth the effort. They don't have to ask of the, of the manufacturer, but they would still need a warrant to use this back door. That's what they say. All right, so, and, and, and that's true, right? They, they would still have to have the, the, some type of a warrant to, to access this back door. But if the back door exists, this is not something like they have to have it physically in their hands for to access this data. That means that if the back door exists, anyone could use it not just the government that has the warrant. And that's my problem with the, the backdoor argument that the FBI is making. All right? If it were something where they physically had to have access to the device, where it had to be held by a person with the warrant in order to execute the type of backdoor that they're talking about, great. But that's not how this stuff works. Right? That means that if this backdoor is created, any nefarious person that decided that they wanted to use that back door could, and as we know, would use that back door. So it's not about the legality of it, right? Encryption is, is, is one of those things. It's a lock, right? And when you lock your door, when you leave your house or you lock your car, when you walk away from it in the parking lot, you expect that that lock is going to keep people out. And if there is a back door built into it, that anyone could use, then you would feel remarkably unsafe. Is Apple's argument that they can't unencrypt their own phone, that they would have to build a back door into every single phone? Yeah. Yeah, their argument is, is that they've built in a fail-safe into their phones. The fail-safe says that if you attempt to access the phone a certain number of times in a certain time frame, it basically destroys all the data on the device. Yeah, the FBI wants that crack at the passwords. Right. They want the, but, the they want that the the self destruct mechanism removed for this you know, for this particular phone. I don't blame you at all. I'm I mean the we've seen this slippery slope and generally speaking we don't trust the government. But if you have a known terrorist who survived a suicide attack in public then that phone should go to Apple, and Apple should dig out all the data and send it to the FBI with the warrant. Well, and then at that point, you're asking them to basically say, well, you know, do you trust us as a company? To keep? We've honored Apple as a, as a whole company has said that we are serious about protection of your data and your identity. Right, and, and this is especially came up after the Snowden stuff and about the the Prism uh, things with the NSA, and that's where all this really started. And I'll tell you right now that had the Prism stuff not come out a couple of years ago, where we found out that the NSA was snooping on us and collecting data without without a warrant and without us watch knowing about it, then today this would be a non-issue, right? Apple would unlock that phone in a heartbeat, right? Because we wouldn't have the negative connotation that we have as a whole towards government snooping within within our, our privacy. So there, this is a chain of events that is unfortunate. However, um, my argument to this is, is that from what we have learned from terrorist phones that have been opened, right, because they have been opened in the past, is that there is almost no data on the phones to begin with because they're using third-party encrypted chat and third-party encrypted email, which has nothing to do with Apple or Android or any other device that it's on. 
that you still can't find out what they were talking about because the that method is is destroyed. So it, I think that this is a is much ado about nothing, so to speak, right? Because I imagine that when they do get the phone open, which they will, that they're going to find that there's nothing there of, of, of consequence. That suits me fine. If they open my phone, there's nothing in there for them. Right. Now, and, and, and I understand where you're coming from with the, you know, I'm a law-abiding citizen, right? I, I'm okay with people looking in. Well, not necessarily. Well, you, know, you don't know me personally, but... Well, I'm, I'm speaking to myself here, but what, what I'm yeah, saying okay. is that I'm a law-abiding citizen, and I understand the, the idea that there's nothing to hide here. So, But that doesn't mean that I think that because there's nothing to hide, that I shouldn't lock my door when I leave, that I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't lock my car when I walk away from it, that I shouldn't have a, a strong password on my email. And it, it's not to protect me from the people that, that should be looking, which is only me. Right, but it's to protect me from the people who want to do me harm, or okay, could I'll, I'll, not I'll even if it's that. not even if it's not wanting to do me harm. It's the people that could do me harm, and and when it comes to data security, right, it's 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 never the people that that you expect to be attacking you. It's the people that have ill intentions for you. And if you don't lock that door, if you don't keep that encryption strong, if you don't make sure that you're protecting yourself, then you're doing yourself a huge disservice. And I think that putting that back door into any type of encryption, let's say the back door, because encryption is all the same, just so you know, right? The, the encryption that you have on your phone is all very similar to the same types of algorithms that the encryption that's used to protect your banking when you're online or to keep those banks safe from criminal attack. So as soon as you in, in, inject a backdoor into any type of encryption, right, you are weakening the entire system. Yeah, it doesn't make it encryption anymore. It's right, exactly. It, it's just an inconvenience that the hacker has to go through. <laughs> I, I appreciate the call, Robert. Thank I you very that. much. You bet. All right, we got to take a break. When we come back, we'll have more of the Computer Guru Show. Be right back. Computer troubles. Need some advice? Call in now. Mike Swanson will be back after these messages. The Computer Guru Show, AM 1030, KBOY, The Voice. All right, welcome back to The Computer Guru Show. We want to thank you very much for listening to the episode this week. And I, we want your feedback. So go to theguruShow.com and and. We could really use your help with s subscriptions there. There's a YouTube link that you can click on our YouTube channel. We've got some big plans for that coming up, so be sure to click on that. I want to thank the sponsors, which is Perfection Auto Works and our Patreon sponsors, uh, just like... Desert Pro Commercial Cleaning LLC. You can find them at TucsonDesertPro.com. So take your time, go over there, say thanks to our sponsors, become a sponsor yourself if you like. Otherwise, visit, visit, visit us at our locations, 510 East Fort Lowell or 64 North Harrison or visit our website, azcomputerguru.com. See you next week.